this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're looking at the LG Lucid on Verizon Wireless. This is a really nice LTE phone with a 4-inch IPS display and a beautiful slim design for only 80 bucks. We're going to take a look at it now. So this is the LG Lucid, available on Verizon Wireless on March 29th for only $79.99 with contract. And you get a really nice phone for the price. I'm pretty impressed. It's got a 4-inch Nova display, which means IPS display, and as you can see, it's very colorful. It's nice and bright. And it's 800 by 480 resolution, which is kind of your basic standard medium to high end resolution. Now it's not going to, you know, compete with those 720p and 1080p kind of displays, but really it's a good match for a 4 inch screen size. And it's really good looking too. Usually when you get a budget phone, well, you pay the price in design. Everybody looks at your phone and says, hey, you got a budget phone there. Not so much with this one. Nice looking on the front, and then really interesting kind of tapered curvy design here makes it look even thinner than it is. It is a fairly thin phone and it weighs about five ounces. That's kind of a nice design element here. It runs on both sides. So you got both sides have that. And this is your power button over here. Interestingly there's what looks like a button over here but it actually doesn't move or do anything. And on the back you can see well we see fingerprints here. That's the one bad thing. It's shiny and it's black but it has that kind of red striped iridescent pattern that as you move it in the light you can start to really see it pick up the colors. Let's see if we can kind of get it to pick up some of that. It also makes a good mirror. <laughs> so definitely a good looking phone. It weighs around 5 ounces. Feels good in the hand. Looks nice. The only bad thing is like I said it picks up fingerprints like crazy. As we take a look around this is your pull off point to pull the back off. Comes off pretty easily. Nothing on that side except for your power button up here, which is fairly conveniently located. Here's your headphone jack, a microphone hole up here. And on this side we have the volume controls. And there's your micro USB port. Nice little bevel to the sides here. And let's take a look and see what's inside the phone after we look at the back. Here's your speaker hole. 5 megapixel rather camera, LED flash. This can shoot 1080p video by the way. And let's take a look inside. We've got a 1700 milliamp battery. That's a pretty good capacity battery. We're still testing battery life on it. So far it's doing fairly well, especially for a Verizon LTE phone. And it helps it has a Qualcomm CPU that integrates nicely with the Qualcomm LTE chipset for better power management. Got a micro SIM card here for your Verizon LTE. This is not a world phone, just a CDMA phone, so that's just for Verizon LTE there. And we have a micro SD card slot over here does not come with a card. It has 8 gigs of internal storage. Not all of that is available for use. Some of it's res reserved for the operating system. But hey, for 80 bucks, that's fine. You can go out and buy your own card. The specs of the phone are actually pretty good again for the price. You get a gig of RAM. Again, that 8 gigs of internal storage. Not, not exactly groundbreaking there, but you can expand it with a micro SD card. And it has a 1.2 gigahertz dual core dual core Snapdragon CPU that benchmarks very well in Quadrant. We got a 2615, Linpack did 61 on the multi-thread test, and it's a responsive enough phone. It runs Android OS 2.3 Gingerbread. Yet again, we are not seeing ICS coming out on new phones yet. It is upgradable to Ice Cream Sandwich. However, Verizon and LG are not saying when, and given LG's track record, well, I wouldn't expect it to be coming out real, real soon, but hey, you never know. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 3.0, and the usual GPS. You can use standalone GPS services and assisted GPS on this, and you can use Google Maps, that's included, as well as VZ Navigator and any other mapping solution you choose to download. We have the usual capacitive touch buttons here at the bottom, and we have the LG UI, which includes a couple of widgets. Here's a new one that they've got, which is actually a phone dollar. It seems a little bit redundant, so you can just tap phone right down there and bring up the dialer anyway. That's, this is almost like an accident waiting to happen, but then again I guess the chances of you hitting nine digits and send accidentally are probably not too high. You get their weather widget over here with the clock, and if you take a look at the apps, typical of LG, we have the organization kind of stuff here. You've got a bunch of preset categories, tools, news, media, that kind of thing. And anything you want to collapse, you don't want to see it, you just tap that there. And this is all customizable. You can change things into different categories, create your own categories, and delete them. So I actually think that that's kind of handy, because those of us who get a lot of apps on board, it can be kind of hard to find anything. Verizon software is here in its own little ghetto. Uh, we've got VZ Navigator, their mobile hotspot feature, which is handy. You can use this as a mobile hotspot. Share the LTE connection and love with tablets and notebooks and all that kind of stuff. Kindle is preloaded. Backup Assistant. We've got Let's Call 3. Verizon's own app store, their VCast tones, Plants vs. Zombies is preloaded as well, and My Verizon Mobile to manage your account. 
All the basics are on board. You got your email, your Gmail, Google Plus is preloaded as well. Voice dialing, Google Talk, all that sort of stuff. Camera gallery, all things you'd expect from Google. The YouTube player as well. Video player, you've got two of those. And we've got video producer, which is a video editing tool that LG includes, which is kind of cool. Google Books, Google Music, the usual WebKit web browser, Google Maps and Navigation and Places, and we've got Polaris Office here, and this is a version that can both view, edit, and create documents. As you can see here, you can also do some online file stuff. And if you want to create a new document, new document, new spreadsheet, new slides for PowerPoint compatible presentation, and you're good to go. And there's another neat LG app. It's called Rich Note here. And if you create a new one, you can type in whatever you want, and then you can attach all sorts of multimedia stuff. You can take a camera picture and insert something from your gallery, do a voice recording, or add audio, current location map. So that's kind of a handy little tool too. The Lucid has good voice quality, and you can see it's got a fairly large, easy-to-use dialer here, and it has a pictorial version of frequently called folks up here, access to your call log, your contacts, any groups, and you've got tools here if you want to switch over to messaging real quick. That's kind of handy. So nicely done. Again, we really like the voice quality on the phone quite a bit. Data speeds have been very good on this on Verizon's LTE 4G network with a really, really poor signal. We're talking about a negative 105 dB, which is just about as low as you can get before you're going to drop it. We actually got 10 megabit per second down and 2 megabit per second up. And with a good signal, we saw up to about 22 megabit per second down and 10 up, which for our area, which has a lot of LTE devices keeping the network busy at this point, that's pretty good. The phone has both a front video chat camera and a rear 5 megapixel. Now, 5 megapixels doesn't sound like much, but LG makes pretty good camera modules and it takes nice sharp shots. The UI is pretty good and it's pretty quick to take pictures too. You've got your access to all your settings over here, your flash control, brightness, swapping between the front and the rear camera, and switching between video and camera modes is right down here. And then you've got your quick shortcut to gallery, so pretty standard stuff. And then it tells you some of your basic settings here that you've got flash turned on and what resolution you're shooting at. And then you've got more options here for ISO, white balance, color effects, scene modes, and all that kind of thing. And it's got autofocus and face tracking mode as well. And if we want to take a picture, just aim it at our pretty plants. Very fast. And again, it can also shoot 1080p video, but you know, with a 5 megapixel camera, you're not talking about a lot of image data there in your video, so it's okay. It's, it's, we've seen worse, but it's not going to be something that you're going to be the pride of YouTube with. Speaking of YouTube, plays that just fine. We're going to test it over Verizon's LTE network right now. And we're testing an HD movie trailer here. Got media volume almost up to max. This is not a very loud speaker. So it looks really good, nice and sharp, good frame rate. Audio is in sync. So there's a YouTube player over LTE. And of course you can also download Adobe Flash Player for those videos that are not hosted on YouTube and for Flash-based games. We're going to test out the web browser right now. We'll test out Adobe Flash while we're at it. We'll visit our own website. As you can see the load time. We have not loaded the website before, so this is not cached. And this is with a not real strong LTE signal pretty fast. And it's loading up the last of the page and I'll scroll more quickly once it's done. Now that it's loaded all the ads. 
So, pretty good. And boy, what a really nice IPS display this has. Let's take a look at a video of ice cream sandwich on the Samsung Galaxy Skyrocket. And we've got our video loaded. Let's test it out. And again, we're still doing this over Verizon's LTE network. And here we go. It's looking good. It's playing quite well. It looks very sharp. And the voice syncing is pretty good, too. Part of the LG UI is a handy little swipe down to control your wireless radios quickly and to access your Wi-Fi networks and to see any uh, notifications. And we've also got the LG keyboard here, which doesn't look hugely different from the standard Android keyboard. A little bit bigger, taller keys. And you can also press and hold to switch between that and swipe, which is included. Thanks to the dual core 1.2 GHz Snapdragon CPU, this is up to the task of gaming. We downloaded Galaxy Striker 2012. It's a free space shooter game. And Netflix is preloaded as well for those of you who like your streaming movie services. And we'll test that out now. We do have Wi Fi on, but one thing I've noticed is that the Wi-Fi reception on this phone, at least on our network, is not that good. So I'm not sure it's going to do that much better than LTE would anyway. <sighs> it's a little buffering up. It's just sharpen. And there we go. We've gotten nice and sharp now. Looking good. Again, the speaker is not too, too loud, but that's what the headphone jack is for, our Bluetooth headphones. Beautiful screen, really nice for watching movies. Unfortunately, the screen, just like the back, does pick up a lot of fingerprints, though, so you're going to want to wipe it to get the best possible viewing experience. So that's the LG Lucid. It's available March 29th on Verizon Wireless for $80 with contract, and it's quite a nice phone for the price with that 4-inch IPS display. Got a fast 1.2 gigahertz Qualcomm processor, good camera on it, and really nice design overall. And you've got some nice business software loader like Polaris Office, and of course it can play games and do all that nice multimedia streaming stuff as well. Google Maps is on board, VZ Navigator, so it's a very complete solution phone. Nice voice quality as well, and good LTE download speeds. The only thing we haven't been so thrilled with so far is the Wi-Fi reception, at least on our network, it has not been so good. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review of the LG Lucid, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.